Today, I have five secret pro tips to make you a better player. And to top it off, we'll have an extra one at the end. Tip number one, we're going to be talking about dead silence, or you can call it covert sneakers. Now, you need to know the ins and outs of this perk. Yes, it does eliminate your footsteps, but that's not where you're entirely right. If someone is next to you, like pretty close distance, and they have their headset cranked, they can still hear you. So even though it takes away most of the footsteps, if they're very close to you, there's a chance they can still hear you. And you need to know that. To understanding a little more, any sound you make with your gun or anything you can technically hear, they can hear it as well. So if I'm aiming in, and you make that kind of clinking sound. Or if I'm YYing, switching my, or switching my guns, swapping my guns around, they can hear that. Obviously, if you're reloading, they can hear that. So a lot of these regular sounds that you can make, they will hear even though you have that silence on. Because it te technically only eliminates footsteps. So you have to be very careful when YYing or moving around the map. And try not to make too much sound if you're trying to be sneaky. Lastly, which is kind of a no-brainer, but just for everyone understands, if you creak, peek open a door, they can hear this. And obviously, if you if you slam open a door, I mean, they'll hear that. Tip number two, we're going to be talking about how to make slide canceling better, which is the number one movement slash engager in MW3. For this, you're going to want to go to your settings. Go to controller and then gameplay. Make sure your automatic tactical sprint is on because that will allow you to fully tactical sprint right away to give you that super fast slide cancel. Next, for slide slash dive behavior, make sure to put this on slide only. This is going to make your slide and sliding in general more responsive. And it's going to be very effective. And last, a setting not many people talk about is you're going to want to go down to slide cancel sprint. And this is basically to turn off the slide and cancel sprint, which allows to crouch. This is going to make your slide cancel even easier to do and more fluid. You change these couple of settings and now you're going to be sliding like a pro. Very fast, very fluid, very easy. You're going to be like, wow, I'm looking like Shotzi all of a sudden. Yes, yeah, settings do make a big difference when it comes to slide canceling. Believe it or not, it is practice. It is learning how to slide cancel, but slide canceling is fairly simple. But with these settings, it can make it even better for you. And if you're wondering how to slide cancel to begin with, all it is is slide and then jump. This is going to pick you up off the slide cancel. And then, of course, you just aim in and shoot. So you slide, jump, aim in, slide, jump, aim in. And all this is all you have to do. It's fairly simple with these settings. You'll be slide canceling like a pro in no time. Tip number three, you're probably wondering why I'm climbing up a ladder right now. I'm going to show you something that a lot of people don't know about MW3. It's almost impossible to die off of fall damage. 99.9%. .9%. There's almost no place in the map in multiplayer you can die from fall damage. So don't ever worry about potentially dying when you're jumping off somewhere high. Now, mind you, if you are weak, yes, you can potentially die. But that is only if you are weak. Ideally, no matter where you jump from, you'll be fine. Also, even though I'm weak right here, I'm going to show you that I'll still survive with fall damage. Also, there's a super jump you can do. You just got to jump as soon as you land, and that's going to make you fly. So don't be afraid of heights and understand you can fly off top buildings and challenge, and you'll be just fine. It can even come in handy sometimes. And that brings me to tip four, rotational aim assist. Do you want to increase your aim assist? Well, understanding this one thing will help you get even more aim assist and will technically shoot straighter. So something you have to notice from my perspective and my POV is that I use both sticks and I strafe left and right. And I basically use my left stick to pick up that extra aim assist, aka rotational aim assist. So whenever I'm shooting my gun and I'm running around the map, a lot of times I'm always strafing. That's one. I'm always strafing. But strafing is basically moving left to right with your stick. So I'm always strafing. You get that rotational aim assist. See how like I'm kind of pulling towards him? It's kind of pulling towards his character a little bit. I'm not even moving my right stick. So that is rotational aim assist. So I'm basically moving left to right. Sometimes pulling back a little bit as well. And this the spinning the circle using your left stick is going to give you that extra aim assist. And then obviously you use your right stick to finish those last final shots and be a little bit more on point. See how I slid into that guy and then I, I pulled back. I'm constantly moving my left stick around when I'm shooting, giving me the extra aim assist, that super sticky aim. You can see my aim is very, very on point. Now, this does require a little bit of practice, but using your left stick is a must. I know your right stick is to aim, but use your left stick, again, for one, rotational aim assist, and two, when you are strafing your character left and right, it's going to also put, like, on top of the aim assist, your crosshairs or your aim is going to be on top of your target easier. So then you're basically using both sticks to help you aim. Another question you might ask, well, Apathy, what if I'm on a head glitch and I'm having a really good cover here? I'm not going to strafe off the head glitch. Well, you can still mini strafe on the head glitch. So something I would do is probably do this. As soon as I see someone, or let's say I'm standing still, as soon as I see someone, I'm shooting and I'm strafing, shooting and I'm strafing. 
I'm not just standing still. Again, I'm another reason is you make yourself a harder target when you're strafing like this. And two, I'm trying to get that extra aim assist. I'm trying to get that rotational aim assist. So I'm strafing. Even on a head glitch, you rarely ever, ever, ever see me just standing still on a head glitch and just using my right stick. I'm always both fingers on both sticks, ready to move, ready to pull that rotational aim assist, ready to be the best. So if you feel like your aim is struggling, if you feel like you have less aim assist, if you feel like you could work on it, make sure to use both sticks. This is going to be your best friend and it's going to help you pull that extra aim assist so you can dominate. Tip number five. This is something that's really effective in MW3, especially due to the sliding and the movement in this game. And that's going to be sliding down slopes or like ramps or stairs because that's going to give you a boost in speed that normally wouldn't on the floor. So to use an example here, on this part of the map, for example, this steps right here, if I'm going to challenge, let's say someone here, I'm going to slide down this ramp and challenge like this. You see how fast that movement is? It's because the momentum going down the slope or the steps or whatever it may be is very fast. Call of Duty is a bit of a momentum game, you know? So using that momentum to go down the ramp or slope or staircase or whatever it may be will give you the advantage. For example, another one is like right here. See how fast I slide down that steps? I can challenge. If I want to challenge mid, it's a very fast slide cancel challenge. And this is something that requires a little bit of practice. But once you understand, you can do this anywhere. And every map has their own slopes and ramps and staircases that you can utilize to do this exact movement. Obviously, this is the back of a spawn, but you can see down the stairs will be very quick if I just slide down. And on top of that, I, I'm sliding down. I'm ready for a gunfight. So this is like a very fast camera challenge versus obviously if I just run down the stairs. You see, one, if I slide down and I turn around, I'm able to challenge whoever's looking here. And two, I'm a lot faster. So it's a plus plus. The extra momentum and extra boost can make you camera people even harder. And if you use it the right time, it'll help you win more gunfights. And now for the extra tip. I'm going to take you to school when it comes to weapons and knives. You're probably wondering why a lot of pros or certain players run knives, maybe in search and destroy. It's because knives have a longer distance with tactical sprint. So for example, I'm going to pull out my gun here and I'm going to just sprint down here, the lane. And around here, I basically exhaust my tactical sprint, right? So around the start of this dumpster. Now I'm going to pull out my knife, AKA my secondary. And this is why rushing is good with a knife. And you're going to see, I'm going to be able to tactical sprint a lot farther. Same spot. We're going to ignore this bot. And they may be able to get to, to the fence and still had a little bit extra tactical sprint left because it almost does double the distance. So this is why a knife is really good to use. And if you're playing search and destroy or rush spell, or you're trying to get somewhere fast, attack the knife is a must and it's a play you're going to want to use. Thank you guys so much for watching today. If you learned something new, make sure to drop a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other tip videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.